Okay, Danny Garcia um, said he's the phantom if you're the ghost, I guess. Um, what would you say to that? I have no comment on that. Um, you know, everybody says they're this, they're that, phantom, ghostbuster, all kinds of stuff. You know, you still got to fight, come in and, and make it happen. So, uh, you know, it's just about being ready for the fight. You're always judged on your most recent fight, Robert, and I know you probably weren't pleased with that. What's mm -hmm. going to be different this time around? I think uh, from the last fight, I think that's what scored me this fight. So, <laughs> um, you know, uh, just being more prepared, more ready. Uh, you know, last time, last fight, uh, you know, didn't have really uh, too good of sparring. Didn't have what we really needed. But, uh, you know, this time around, you know, I sat back um, after the fight and really assessed everything in my training and what I needed to do to get back on top and, uh, you know, made a lot of adjustments. You know, a lot of boxers make adjustments as they get older as well. You know, Hagler did it, Ray Leonard did it. A lot of guys will change their style. That bravado sometimes may get the best of you. What's going to be your style in this fight? Um, for me, it wasn't so much uh, uh, making adjustments in my style. It was uh, uh, making adjustments in my training. Uh, you know, my training regimen, you know, bringing in better sparring. Uh, you know, going throwback the way I used to train and get ready for fights. Um, you know, I was kind of falling off of uh, what what I do to get ready. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's just a matter of doing everything right and doing everything the proper way to be 100% ready. And um, I think I did that for this fight. Fights for the WBC title I just read last night. Um, what does that mean to fight Danny Garcia for the WBC? Um, well, you know, he was the WBC champion at 140 pounds. So, you know, coming up to 147, uh, you know, it's like taking his title, I guess. Uh, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited about it. And, uh, you know what, uh, you still got to go out there and make it happen. And, um, you know, I know Danny Garcia is being 100% prepared because when somebody fights me, they come extra ready, uh, knowing what kind of fighter I am. So uh, I know he's going to be he's going to be ready for this fight. In hindsight, do you think coming off the tough Thurman fight, you might have came back too fast in the Martinez fight? Uh, you know, I came back a little too fast, but, you know, I ain't going to use that as an excuse. Uh, you know, I just wasn't 100% prepared for that fight. And, and uh, you know, Martinez came and did his thing. He came, he fought, he, he worked his butt off to, to be ready for the fight, and uh, he came and, and had a great performance against me. So, uh, you know what, but I sucked it up and got it done. And, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of happy the way that fight went uh, because it really made me step back and assess my, my whole training regimen and everything and how I get prepared for fights. And, uh, you know, it just, uh, it's just been, uh, hasn't been the same. So, uh, you know, getting back in that ring, uh, you know, on the 23rd, I think I did everything I had to do to be uh, ready for the fight. On the flip side, you had a little break now since that fight. Did that time off maybe help you kind of just recharge your batteries? Uh, yeah, I mean, it gave me time to, to really think and, and assess everything in my career, you know, how I'm fighting, how I'm training, um, you know, the stuff I need to do to get back, uh, back on my toes and, and on my game. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, the, the break uh, really did help a lot. And, uh, you know, I'm... I'm getting older now in the sport and uh, you know you got to take care of your body. Do you force him to prove that he's got legitimate power at 147 or is that going to be something that you give him the benefit of the doubt of? Uh, you know we're going to find out when he gets in there you know how his power feels so uh, you know what uh, there, there's a uh, there's respect to somebody's power to a certain degree where uh, you're not scared of it but you do respect it so uh, you know he does he does uh, he does carry a punch so um, you know, you got to come out and, and take care of business and, and just stay on your game and, uh, you know, do what you got to do in the ring. I want you to say something regarding your dad. I've been reading some negative criticism. It seems like if a trainer doesn't have a large stable, they say, well, if the guy was with a different trainer or a better trainer. Talk about what your dad has done for you, your career, and what he brings to the table as a trainer. I mean, look how many world championships I won, different multiple weight division. Uh, if you look back and assess my career, um, you know, my father did a tremendous job, and he still is doing a tremendous job. Uh, you know, it's, it's one thing, uh, it's one thing, you know, being a man and taking care of what you got to take care of on your end. Um, you know, somebody could tell you, somebody could tell you uh, do this and that, but if you're not doing it 100%, uh, you know, it doesn't mean anything. So, uh, you know, uh, it had it came down to, to really looking at my own self and not my father on. on uh, you know, my father's always grinding me, and he's always training me hard, and he's always getting me prepared. And, uh, you know, I mean, if you watch some of my fights, he'll be telling me to do something, and I'm doing the complete opposite. And he's like, 
what's wrong? I mean, he tells me to box a guy and I'm banging with a guy or I'm, he tells me to, to bang with a guy and I'm boxing the guy. So, um, you know, it comes down to, to yourself on, on paying attention, listening, being sharp on your game and doing what you have to do. So, uh, you know, I think my father did a great job with me. Uh, you know, I've won multiple uh, world championships in different divisions and, uh, you know, we're going to show the 23rd, you know, what kind of trainer my father really is. Could you even imagine fighting without him in your corner? Um, no, I can't. Uh, you know what? My father knows me like the back of his hand, and uh, you know he's going to push me and, and he's going to pull me until uh, you know until I'm 100% prepared. Uh, you know, it, it comes down to being mentally prepared, spiritually prepared, and uh, you know having having what you need, uh, having what you need, uh, you know, in the gym also to uh, to be prepared, like you know, great sparring and stuff like that. I assume you were aware of those comments, though, right? I mean. What crossed your mind when you read or hear about things like that? You know, it just lights a fire under you, lights a fire under my father, um, you know, to come back strong and come back uh, better and, and to get out there and, and uh, you know, prove to the doubters that, uh, you know, credits do where it's due. And, uh, you know, there's always going to be people doubting and there's always going to be people, um, you know, with negative comments. Uh, you know, you just got to block them out and, um, you know, just keep on trucking through. Danny says he's going to knock you out. What crossed your mind when you heard that comment? You know, everybody says they're going to knock me out. Um, you know what? It is what it is. He's going to say he's going to knock me out, uh, but, hey, I'm coming to fight. So it, it excites me to know that uh, he's going to come and try to knock me out. <laughs> CrossFit, is that still a part of your camp? Oh, definitely CrossFit's a part of my camp. Uh, you know, been working, uh, you know, made some adjustments with that. And, uh, you know, you got to know when to push and pull. Um, and I get too out of hand, so uh, you know we did a lot. We did a lot of good work for this camp, and, and made a lot of adjustments. And uh, you know, like, like I said, we went back and really assessed everything. Uh, you know, with the training regimen, and, and I think uh, I think we got it down pretty good. Hey Robert, would you, would you consider yourself an underdog in this fight? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, everybody has me as an underdog. You know, a lot of the media is. Uh, you know, real hyped off Danny Garcia, and, uh, you know, it, it's just the way it is. Like I said, uh, I said before, I go, hey, you know what? I've been an underdog my whole life since we were a kid. My whole family's been an underdog, and uh, you know what? It, it's just, uh, you know, having your back against that wall, you know, it just makes you fight that much more. Did you see his fight against Matisseo Herrera, where a lot of people thought that Herrera beat him? Yeah, I did see that fight. I did see that fight, and, uh, hey, you know what? Herrera did a really good job in that fight. Um, you know, judges thought different. Um, but, hey, you know what? That's the way it went. Did you see things in that fight that gave you ideas about how to fight Garcia? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you look at all the film and uh, you take pieces out of, you know, all the fights and, and you look at things that are going to give him trouble and, uh, you know, things that he does good to give people trouble. So, you know, you build your game plan around uh, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, the one thing is... Uh, you know, you you can't be scared of uh, of uh, executing that game plan just because the guy you know got a little bit of cracking power, and and I think uh, that's what happens to a lot of people is, uh, you know, everybody talks that he got a great power, so they kind of they kind of stay a little hesitant. Do you think people are underestimating how hard it is for an orthodox fighter to fight a southpaw? Because I think that a lot of the media are, are not realizing how stylistically tough that matchup can be. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people look at, uh, they just look at what they do good. They don't look at what's going to give the guy trouble. Um, you know, I watched the fight with uh, with him and Zap Judah. Uh, you know, Zap Judah gave him a bit of trouble. Uh, you know, he said it himself. He had to change his game plan, and, and you know, Zap took some stuff away from him that that he wanted to execute. But you know, he did get the job done. Uh, you know, but I, I think. Uh, I think guys like Zap Judah are not as crafty as me in the ring. So, um, you know, really quick, guys pop. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's predictable. In your last couple of fights, it appears you get stronger when you get hurt. And as the fight goes on, you're more willing to dig deeper. Danny hasn't really, he stopped Pauli Malinaji, but he hasn't really been stopping a lot of people lately. If the fight goes longer, do you think that's going to benefit you and you can take over later? Oh, most definitely. You know, I do get stronger during, uh, you know, adversity. Um, you know, I'm just the type of guy that digs deep and just pushes through and, and works hard. So, um, you know, I, I come to fight. I come to fight, and, uh, you know, we're going to see how he reacts to it.
you know, it could be it could be a benefit, it could, you know, or not. So see what happens during the fight. You talk about being spiritually prepared. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, you know, being spiritually prepared, you know, staying humble, putting God first. Um, you know, I was kind of tending to fall away from that a bit. And, and you know, that's a big key to my, my game plans all the time is, uh, you know, being close to God and, and putting him first and, uh, you know, getting a little bit loud, a little bit crazy. Uh, you know, God doesn't like that. And, and, you know, it's about coming coming in with a humble approach and, um, you know, praising him and letting him uh, glorify everything. So, you know what, I just... Uh, just thank God that, uh, you know, what the last fight I had a real, real rude awakening. You were fighting at the Staples Center where you won your first world title. <clears throat> How special is that to be fighting in L.A. at the Staples Center where you won your first world title? Well, you know, it's nice to be fighting at the Staples Center here in Los Angeles. Uh, you know, but, you know, wherever it is, you know, you're going to come and fight. So, uh, you know, you really don't look too much into that and, and just be prepared to fight because some fighters tend to get caught into, you know, the hype of the event and stuff like that, and uh, that's what I know what it's about. What it's about is getting ready for the fight and taking care of business fight night. So being a California guy and a Mexican guy, you should have the uh, fans in your corner, I would assume. Oh, most definitely. You know, the fans are going to show up and be there, especially Los Angeles, such a, a great boxing city. Uh, um, you know, they, sh they show. They show and they support really, really good. So I'm excited. I'm excited about the fight, and, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be great. When you fought uh, the friend of Pino Hosa in 2009, Andy Garcia was in the Southern Man. Did you notice him? Did you get to have to watch the tape of that fight and then the follow up the fight itself? And have you, have you drawn how things have changed in the season? You know, everybody improves. Everybody improves. You know, it's funny that uh, at that time he was uh, the bigger fighter, and now uh, going into this fight, uh, you know, he's up now at Walterway where I'm at, so. Uh, I just blew past his weight division and jumped to 147. Can you talk about that, Robert? People, don't, people seem to forget that you fought once at 122 pounds. You won the title at 26. Now you're fighting at 47. Can you just talk about uh, climbing up all those weight classes and how difficult that is? Maybe you don't get credit for that. Uh, you know what? Really don't trip off the credit because, uh, I mean, look at Floyd. I mean, one of the best fighters in the, in the history of boxing. And now that he's retiring, he's starting to get a bit of credit. So, uh, you know, just don't trip. You just keep going. Uh, you don't look back. And, uh, you know, but I, I, I did wreck through a lot of weight classes, you know, started at 22. Now I'm at 47. And, uh, you know, just, just moved and moved through pretty fast. So, um, you know, but you don't worry about that. You know, they want to give you credit, they give you credit. But, you know, what? the main thing is just being prepared for fights and getting it done. 47 as high as you go? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> there's, there's multiple ways to promote a fight, and I think one of the latest things that popped up is, hey, this is Mexican pride against Puerto Rican pride. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not just hype. That's real, right? Oh, that's real. That's real. I mean, you know, it, it's been a rivalry in, in boxing, I mean, before I was even born. So, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's just one of those things that, that – gets the fans really involved and gets them excited. I mean, it's like, it's like a soccer game. Like, you're watching World Cup. You're going you're gonna to go for your, your country or, or, you know, your heritage. And, uh, you know, that's the, way it, that's the way it is in boxing. So, um, you know, it is a big, it is a big deal. And, uh, you know, Danny Garcia acts like it isn't, but it is. It is with the fans. And, uh, you know what, it's, it's the way it's going to go down. Uh, you know, it's that rivalry that, that's been in boxing so long. I mean, and it's one of the best rivalries that's out there. I mean, they put out the best fights. I mean, you just had um, Canelo Cotto, who was a big rivalry fight, and, uh, you know, everybody was all excited about it. As a spiritual guy, as a role model, does it kind of bother you a little bit how Danny Garcia conducts himself to the public and to the young boxing fans? Uh, no, not at all. I mean... You know, he does, he does carry himself with class. Um, you know, he does uh, get a little excited and, uh, um, you know, and does what he does. But, you know what, you, you, you know, people are going to be people. You know, you, you can't change everybody and uh, you can't have everybody do what you want. I mean, you know, I'm not going to be no terrorist and come out and put a gun to you and go, hey, you're going to be this way and that's it. So, um, you know, you, you just got to... Uh, just let people be who they are, and uh, hopefully uh, they get it in the long run.
you talked about him not making it a big deal about the Mexico and Puerto Rico. Do you think maybe he doesn't identify as much with his people as you do with yours? Well, he doesn't talk Spanish, so, <laughs> you know, you know uh, maybe he doesn't communicate with them very well because he can't, uh, he, you know, he can't speak, uh, speak Spanish. So, uh, you know, who knows? Who knows? Uh, you know, he, he's, he's playing that political, politically correct card where, you know, he wants to just be for everybody, which, uh, hey, you know what? It's the way he wants to roll. I guess my last question, I've been wanting to ask you this for a long time, is when you fought um, Casamayor, Juan Diaz fought Marquez, and people always forget that you were actually supposed to fight Marquez on that fight, and then you jumped up after that. Why do, I guess it was kind of asked earlier, but specifically, why do you think people allowed that to happen to kind of let you float under the radar like that? Uh, you know, it has to do with promotion and stuff like that, you know? They want to babysit a guy and make sure that he's getting the, that mega fight, and you know, when you got an up-and-coming guy that's been the mandatory, the number one contender to fight him for, you know, for a few weight classes, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it all comes down to, to the promoter and the fighter, if they want to take the fight or not. And, uh, you know, it never happened. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't get to. And uh, I would have loved it to happen. And it didn't. So, uh, you know, can't, uh, can't cry over spilled milk. You talked about having confidence in this training camp. What was uh, specifically different about training this time around than the previous? That guy right there, <laughs> the sparring partner. You know, having great sparring is, is, uh, is, is one of the things uh, that's going to get you ready for fights. And, uh, you know, in the past, uh, you know, I was just bringing guys in that I can get away with a lot of stuff. Uh, um, you know, I can just, just cruise through the sparring sessions. And, uh, you know, when you're at this, this top level, this championship level, you need to be on your A game and you need somebody that's going to push you and push you and, and you make a mistake that's going to make you pay. And, uh, you know, that's what Tito did with, with, uh, with me is, uh, you know, he pushed me to the limits and, uh, you know, we had great work together, great sparring sessions. And, uh, you know, it just, I, I, I'm excited about it. And uh, I, I know I'm going to be ready for this fight. Don't act like you can't make it out. It's just in Los Angeles, so get out there. <laughs> get your tickets. But if not, it's going to be on Fox. I'm excited about it, and uh, you know what? We're going to kick the year off great. Yeah, talk a little bit about that. This is boxing returning to Fox, regular Fox. On a big weekend, there's no football. I mean, this is going to be a big fight with a lot of viewers. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's prime time, and, you know, you turn your TV on. It's going to be on. I'm excited about it. Uh, you know, you don't got to go get HBO or Showtime or anything like that or, or you know, a special package for uh, ESPN or something like that. So, uh, you know what, it's going to be nice. It's going to be nice to be able to, on, on, on regular network TV, uh, turn your TV on and it's there. So, um, it's great. It's great. No football that weekend, uh, just pure boxing. Well, on top of that, that's the that used to be the UFC Fox date. So, you're actually getting a carryover from possibly a different demographic of about two to three years this is traditionally a big UFC Fox card, and now it's a big boxing fight card. Boxing's back. Everybody thought, uh, you know, MMA was taking over, but boxing never dies, man. It's been around for years and years and years. So, um, you know what? People just love the sport. People love the sport, and, and um, now that it's coming out on network TV, they get to see more of our, our stories and what kind of people we are, and we're not just these crazy guys that bang each other around. And, uh, you know, it... it uh, it's nice. It's nice. It's nice to uh, to be able to market to a, a different, a whole new set of fans and people out there that uh, that don't really know a fighter.